Hi, everyone, and thank you for joining us today on our Clean Cities, our final Clean City Winter Webinar Series um, focused on Clean Cities tools. And this webinar is recorded, so if you have any objections, if you can disconnect now. And also, this will be, like I said, recorded, and it'll be available on our website, and we'll send it out in an email afterwards, also with the slides. And so Heather with Wisconsin Clean Cities uh, will take over now. Also, save questions for the end. If you have any, um, feel free to raise your hand or type your question in the questions box, and we'll answer them at the end after everything's done. So with that, we'll get started. Today, I'm going to tell you about several tools and resources available through the Department of Energy Clean Cities program. They're all available online, and they're free through afdc.energy.gov slash tools. And that website will pop up later in the slides, so you can write it down or go to it. Um, all the tools are meant to help public and private fleets and just general public better understand and use alternative fuels and advanced technology vehicles. So who's talking? Here I am. My name is Heather Getch. I'm a program associate with Wisconsin Clean Cities. I'm coming up on three years with the Clean Cities program. And these are all tools that I use on a regular basis for reference, for data, um, general information, curiosity. Um, they're all great information, updated regularly, and these are things that I promote um, when I'm at events or talking to people too. So just a quick overview, and on the right is the um, handout that we usually have at events that contains all of these websites. If you have one, reference it, use it. And there's the website again. Um, so I'm going to start off with some web pages, basic information, some fuel and station tools, vehicle, fuel economy, fleet tools, informational, and then mobile. Um, I'm also going to go through an example of the station locator, the vehicle cost calculator, and the prep tool, or the petroleum reduction tool. Um, and I'm also going to talk about a new resource that's available uh, called the idle box. And that was put together by Clean Cities. We just launched it, uh, so we want to share it. So a few web pages. Um, there are the websites together provide a comprehensive information on the Clean Cities program and the portfolio of technologies. Um, the first one, Clean Cities website, the national website, contains information about the Clean Cities program. It includes accomplishments, case studies, partnerships, local coalitions, contact information. Um, it also has information about the National Fleet Partnership. Um, and this year, a couple of our members, Quick Trip and Waste Management, were inducted into that. Um, that's a national recognition program that anyone can participate in. If you'd like more information about it, I recommend visiting the Clean Cities website um, or contacting your local Clean Cities, Wisconsin Clean Cities, South Shore, Chicago, whoever, and ask them about that program. Next one, AFDC. That's the one we're mostly going to talk about today, and it stands for Alternative Fuels and Advanced Vehicles Data Center. Um, it houses an extensive collection of information, data, and tools related to all technologies and fuels in the Clean Cities portfolio. Um, and the next one there is fueleconomy.gov. This is really a sister site for the Alternative Fuels and Advanced Vehicle Data Center. Um, it was created between a partnership of the U.S. EPA and Department of Energy and the Clean Cities program. It's the official U.S. government source for fuel economy information. Um, it's got a lot of, it's really great partner to the vehicle search and cost tools on the AFDC. It kind of mirrors that and adds to it. And of course, the Wisconsin Clean Cities site, South Shore Clean Cities site, um, wicleancities.org, southshorecleancities.org. Um, those should be ones you're familiar with. If not, visit them. And you can access all of this information through, those, through the local Clean Cities websites, too. So talking about fuel and station tools, um, the first one is the alternative fueling station locator. And there's a little picture of it on this slide. Um, and later, at the end of this slideshow, I'm actually going to go through an example of a search. So you can sort of see firsthand what I'm talking about. And it's great for anyone that does not have their own centralized refueling station. It allows you to select the type of fuel you need by city or zip code. You can also specify the radius of the search area as well as access advanced options such as the owner type and different payment options. 
And like I said, I'll go through an example of that in just a moment here. Um, next, the Trans Atlas. It's similar, but it's a much more detailed map. It's interactive. It displays station locations, vehicle densities, and biofuel production facilities. Excuse me. The tool is great for researching and comparing stations and vehicle densities. It uses a lot of GIS information. You can do a lot of layering, taking away layers, adding layers to it. Um, it's a great research tool. Next is the station's custom query. It's a database. It's a database where you can search for a list of stations for a particular fuel in your state. So if you're curious about just, say, natural gas in Wisconsin, you can search for just the state natural gas stations in Wisconsin. You can do it for any state and any fuel. Um, the total stations count is just that. It allows you to find the number of total number of fueling stations in the United States or by individual state, and that is also by fuel type. So if you wanted all the electric charging stations in the U.S., you want to know how many totals are in the U.S., you can type that in. It'll give you that. Or if you just want to know how many total are in Wisconsin, you can do that too, or Indiana or Illinois, um, whatever it is you're looking for. Next, the fuel properties search. Um, it allows you to create custom charts and compare fuel properties and characteristics for multiple alternative fuels. So you could search individual fuels. And you can also search several different ones. And it'll produce a chart for you. And it compares basic things. So it compares like octane rating, emissions rating, um, just basics. It's a pretty good tool if you're just starting out and want to know some basic differences. Um, and finally, the Biofuels Atlas. This is an interactive map that shows the locations of feedstock production, biofuels plants, biopower plants, fueling stations, and more. It's very simple, very similar to the Trans Atlas, but it focuses only on biofuels. Um, and so with that, I'm now going to go through an example of the alternative fueling station locator. This here is what we've been talking about. This is the alternative fuels data center, afdc.energy.gov. Um, and so tool is right here. And these are what we're talking about. But right now, we're going to click on Locate Station. So here's the station locator. This was just updated this year, so it's got some new features that make it much more easier to use, more user friendly. So just basics, whenever you pull it up, it shows all of the alternative fuel stations that are public in the US. So from there, you can narrow it down. So we're going to type in. You can type in an address, a zip code, or a state. So let's type in Wisconsin. Go. And now it's showing us all the public fueling stations for all the fuel types in Wisconsin. And you can narrow it down from there based on what your interest is. So say you want just the electric stations. Here's the public electric stations in our state. Now say you wanted a total that included all the private. You click on the More Search options. You can include private. You can also include planned stations that are reported. You can change by owner type if you only want private or only federal, state, local, or utility, or all. You can also select by payment. So say you only have a certain card type. Say you have a gas card or you have a fleet card. You can select what you have or just cash, and it will level, change it, the search by that. For electric, you can also specify the charge type that you would like. And then finally, you can change um, the limit. So if you want to restrict it within five miles of what you're searching or whatever, or whatever you're fancy, you can do it for all the fuel types. So and the other neat thing is you can click this link right here, Download Spreadsheet of Matching Stations, and say we wanted all the compressed natural gas public stations in our state. We would uncheck private. We would uncheck planned. These are the public. You can click on this link. It'll download an Excel spreadsheet of all the information. And it includes a lot of information. So let's click here. This is the new Madison Gas and Electric Speedway CNG station. It, right now, it just gives the basics. You can click here and get more information. Here's the address, the phone. If you click on more details, now this is the new information that was added this year. So you can have the map here. 
Um, generally, there's a picture that can be added so that you see what it looks like. You can click to get directions. You can find other stations nearby. It tells you the access. So this is public. Take credit cards, and they're open at any time, 24 hours. They also accept the Speedway fuel card. And then down here, it gives you more details. So it's a fast fill. It has 3,600 PSI, and it accommodates all vehicle sizes and classes. And that can be pretty important depending on what you're driving and where you're heading to. So the other neat thing about this is the planner route. And this is added recently, too. So whenever you click on it, it always starts out showing all the fuels. So let's say we want to go from Madison, Madison, Wisconsin, excuse me, down to Indianapolis. And we want to specify, so let's just say ethanol. We want to make sure we can fill up on E85 as our entire route. We hit go, and now it's showing us these are all the public ethanol refueling stations between Madison, Wisconsin, and Indianapolis, Indiana. And you can change your search options based on these specific things. So let's say you can only use a Visa card. Now it's only going to show me the stations that list Visa or say you need to limit your results. Say you want to expand it a little and put 10 miles. It's going to show more along this route line. And that becomes important when you're doing something like biodiesel or natural gas, because if there isn't a station within that five mile radius, you need to extend it a little. And again, you can always click on the individual stations along the way view more details, just so you can see, OK, it's a fast fill. It's got that PSI. It'll take all vehicle sizes. So that's an example of the station locator on the AFDC site. Moving on to some vehicle tools. So there are two basic, there's a light duty vehicle search and a heavy duty vehicle search. And these, again, are available through that AFDC page. The light duty and heavy duty vehicle searches allow you to find and compare alternative fuel vehicles, electric vehicles, and hybrids. And you have the option to search by fuel type, manufacturer, class, and model year. And again, a sister site to this is at fueleconomy.gov, where you can get some more um, more details about individual vehicles by make and model. Um, and finally, the vehicle cost calculator, um, it shows the total cost of ownership and emissions for most vehicle models. You just enter basic information about your driving habits. It'll display a graph and chart of the total cost, estimated amount of fuel used, and emissions. You can also compare as many vehicles as you would like at a time. So now we're going to go through an example of using this. So going back to this Alternative Fuels Data Center, you would click on Tools. And it's on the left side here. Here's everything we were talking about today. Vehicle Cost Calculator. And it brings up this basic chart here. And if you want to know more about how they decided on all of this information, you can click on this Assumptions button. And it'll go through a lot of details of how they put the calculator together. So just for an example, we're going to compare the Honda Civic the hybrid, the regular gas, and the natural gas, just for reference. So we're going to choose 2012 Honda Civic, and we'll just choose manual. And then we're going to hit Add. So that's added on there. And now we're going to find the Civic Hybrid. and the Civic CNG natural gas. So if we just wanted to know basic, OK. Fuel prices, this is automated on here. You can change it based on your area. Um, around here, natural gas is a little less expensive. This is based on a national average. I'm going to put $1.50 or $1.75. That's a little closer. And gas, that seems about right. You can also add in tax credit. So say you're getting a credit 
there might be something available too, and that's notifying you of that. So then you scroll down, and you want to tell a little bit about how you use the vehicle. For normal daily use, um, they just automate based on nas national averages of what an average American drives. So if you know your exact um, driving habits and know your or can estimate based on how you drive, you can enter that. And then you just hit get results. And now it's comparing those three vehicles. Here's the results. Here's the three vehicles, and it's showing you annual fuel use annual electricity, fuel cost, electrical cost, annual operating cost, cost per mile, and your annual emissions, too. And then based on what you want to see, you can hit the graph for it. So this is showing the cumulative cost of ownership by year in dollars, and it's comparing the three by color shown on the bottom. And so say, let's say I want to view the cost per mile comparison. It's going to show a little graph right here. And then it's going to show over the year, over the life of the vehicle, it's showing over 15 years and the total cost. But then as you click, it changes the graph up here. So you can see for each one what the difference is going to be. You can do this for, for pretty much any um, vehicle model and make. It's a pretty simple tool, but it can be important when you're considering the different vehicle types, when you're curious about cost comparison, what is it really going to mean between this vehicle and that. Um, it's really quite useful for doing uh, back of the envelope calculation, and it's pretty accurate too. So moving on, some fuel economy tools. Um, Fueleconomy.gov, that was what I was saying, is pretty much a sister site. You can do a find a car. It's similar to the light duty, heavy duty vehicle searches, only it compares more aspects. So it includes vehicle fuel efficiency, annual fuel cost, carbon footprints, air pollution scores, and more for vehicle models dating all the way back to 1984. The truck stop electrification locator, it allows drivers to obtain addresses, maps, and driving directions for truck stops that offer electrification sites. So it reduces the need for idling. These sites allow drivers to use onboard anti-idling equipment, which greatly improves the vehicle's efficiency and reduces emissions. And it's, excuse me, it's very similar to the um, alternative fuel station locator, only it's finding just the electrification sites. And it includes the contact information and such for those various sites. So moving on, some fleet tools. Um, the first is a petroleum reduction planning tool. It allows fleets to create their own strategies for petroleum use reduction. You can set an annual petroleum use reduction goal and includes the entire Clean Cities portfolio of fuels and technologies to help meet these goals. It can be used to guide future fleet purchases and strategies. Most importantly, it allows you to create multiple scenarios to discover which strategies will work best based on your fleet data and future plans. And in a moment here, I'll go through an example of using the tool and show you around the tool. The Greek Fleet Footprint Calculator is another planning tool. It allows you to calculate your fleet's petroleum use and greenhouse gas emissions footprint and estimate impacts of future vehicle purchases. Um, it's a pretty good sister tool to the PREP tool, the Petroleum Reduction Planning. And finally, the Fleet Experiences Search. Um, it's a full database of stories highlighting successes of fleets across the nation that use alternative fuels. So if you're looking for examples of the different fuels and technologies, it's a great place to go um, and search. And you can search based on the fuel type or the technology type. You can search based on the fleet type if you're curious about that. Um, so if you don't have a local experience or if you're looking for just more, um, it's a pretty great uh, tool for that. So now let's go through the petroleum reduction planning tool. Again, it's going back to this alternative fuels data center. And then I'm going to click back on tools. And then click on the left here, the petroleum reduction planning tool. And it looks just like in that picture. Again, if you want to know more detail about how they put this together, you can click on this assumptions button right here. And it'll go through pretty detailed um, calculations, formulas, how they decided things um, to put this tool together. Um, you can also create an account when you do this. 
So you can log in, save, and view your different plans that you put together, or you can just start a new plan. You can, and like I said, you can set goals. So if we're starting out, you can click on the set goal here, and you can say, okay, this is how much petroleum use or how, much, how many gallons I want to reduce for our use each year. Here's my percent reduction goal. Here's my petro total petroleum reduction goal. So let's say I want to reduce by 15% oh, annual petroleum use. Let's say I want to reduce it by, I don't know, 800 gallons. Let's say I have a small fleet. And it'll show me my total petroleum reduction goal is 120 gallons. So why don't we bump this up, let's say, 2,000 gallons a year. So I add that goal, and it's automatically putting that goal on the right side here. Here's the goal set. And now you can use these different savings methods to figure out how are you going to meet this goal. So let's say we're going to replace some of our vehicles. We're going to down, we're going to go to more efficient vehicles from what we have. So you can add to the plan. So on the left, it's going to ask you, what do you currently have for vehicles and fuels? And on the right side, it's going to ask, what are you going to replace it with? And this is where you can get creative and change out the different fuel types, different vehicle types, to figure out what's really going to work for you, what's going to help you meet your goals. So let's say we're replacing five. Let's say we're replacing some big vans, some large gasoline vans. And it's going to automatically estimate fuel economy and miles traveled per, per year for the vehicles. Um, so if you don't know that, if you don't already keep that information, it'll auto automatically generate it for you. And let's say on the right here, I'm going to replace all five of those vehicles with another large van, but instead I'm going to use natural gas, compressed natural gas. It's a powertrain standard. It's not a hybrid electric or a plug-in electric. And I'm going to say that I'm going to use it 100% of the time. I'm always going to fuel it up. It's not a bi-fuel or dual fuel. It's always going to be 100% CNG. So then I'm going to add to the plan. So now it's telling me that I'm going to do this. And it's telling me I'm way surpassing my goal just by doing that. It's estimating for me already annually what I'm going to reduce by replacing those vehicles. Let's say I'm going to use alternative fuel in existing vehicles. Maybe I'm just going to convert some of my vehicles. So let's say I have two pickups that are diesel. It's already, again, it's going to estimate my MPG and my miles traveled. And let's say I'm going to, con going to use, I guess, biodiesel. Use B20. So I guess if you're going to do conversion, it would be the replace vehicles. And for using alternative fuel, it's asking about um, using something that's already, because I chose diesel, biofuels are already compatible. If I were to choose gasoline, then it would choose ethanol or natural gas, because that would be a conversion right there. So let's go back. I'm saying I have two diesels. I'm going to start using B20, and I'm going to say that I'm going to use it 50% um, of the year add that to my plan. Now, right here on the right, now it's starting to show, too, because of this, I'm also displacing these greenhouse gases. And on the left, now it's added, OK, replacing that, it's adding this much to my petroleum reduction. Now, let's say I'm also going to include a reduction, uh, no idling policy. And I'm going to reduce. Let's say my goal is I want to reduce idling for 30 minutes or an hour a day. And I'm going to do it for those vans, or I'm going to do it for those two diesel pickups. Let's say I already idle two hours a day. And let's just say 200 days is out of the year. And it's already estimating for me the gallons per hour of fuel that I'm using. So if you can't, if you don't know what that calculation is, it's already generating it for you. And my goal is to reduce idling by an hour a day from the two hours. Add that to the plan. 
And here again, it's adding in this next layer. Here's the greenhouse gases. Here's the annual petroleum. Reducing mileage, that's another strategy that you could use. So that's the miles traveled per year, so miles traveled reduction. And let's say I'm going to do it for all of my vehicles. So I had five large vans and two diesel pickups, so seven vehicles. And you'd have to enter them separately. So I'd have to put the five vans. Well, and now I'm noticing. So I guess it doesn't allow you to do for the alternative fuels. But right now I have the large gasoline vans. So I have five of those. It's already estimating for me this. And let's say I want to reduce my miles traveled by 555. So let's put 11,000. And again, it'll show the greenhouse gas is added and how it's adding to my petroleum reduction. And I want to add another, because I also had those other two diesel trucks. And again, it's estimating. And I want to reduce it by the same, to 11,000. And it's going to add on to that blue. And the finally is driving efficiently. And if you're not sure what any of these mean, see the little click for definition? It'll pull up a little window. So for example, improve the efficiency of your current vehicles by up to 10% adopting efficient driving behaviors, so eco-driving. And then again, I can add to the plan. So first, I'm going to add those five gasoline vans. And it's estimating this again. And then let's say I want to improve the fuel economy by 10%. Add that to the plan. And then I want to add another, because I need to add in those two diesel pickups. And let's say I want to also improve that by 10%. And again, it's adding on the right side the tons of CO2 and the gallons reduction. Now the other great part about this is as you're doing it, it's also generating all the numbers of these columns. So the petroleum reduction per year, the tons of CO2 per year. It's also totaling for me my fuel cost savings per year and my impact on the plan that I had put in setting my goal. So it's showing me here by replacing these five large gas vans, I could save over $300,000 a year just for fuel cost. And again, if you want to know how they calculated that, how did they get to that, you can click on the assumptions button up here and it'll go through exactly how the um, National Renewable Energy Laboratory came up with these different calculations. So at the bottom here, it's totaling to overall, I could save over 3,000 gallons of petroleum a year, 12 tons of CO2, and I could save over $5,000 in fuel cost. So what I can also do here now is I can save this plan by creating an account. I can change it and create it. I could start a new plan and adjust these numbers and then compare the two. So it's pretty useful if you're thinking about incorporating alternative fuels, if you want to figure out how can I reduce my fuel costs, how can I reduce my miles traveled per year, what does it look like? This is a really great visualization of that. And if you ever need help or would like um, Clean Cities to go through this with you, we're also happy to do that. So with that, I'm going to get back to our presentation, move on to the next category here, and it's informational tools. So the incentives and laws search is, and this is again talking about that AFDC site, um, it's a searchable database of federal and state incentives and laws related to alternative fuels and vehicles, air quality, fuel efficiency, and other transportation topics. It's a great way to browse all that's available to you and how to access the opportunities. And this is also listed for both federal and for state. Um, and you can search, and you can search that way. You can search by state, you can search by federal, and they all list um, links to find more information and contact information for how to get involved with those or if you have questions. Next is a publication search. It's a great resource if you're researching a topic and would like to know the basics or if you're having an event and want to have some information available to the attendees. You can download, you can print, you can order. And it includes everything about alternative fuels, vehicles, efficiency, and more. If you've ever seen a Clean Cities um, exhibit table at an event, 
um, the resources that we have laid out there with the DOE mark on them, this is where we get them from. Related link search, it generates a list of alternative fuel and advanced vehicle websites by category. So you could search by fuel type, um, you could search by fleet type. It's another great tool for researching very specific topics. Next is state information search. It's a way to obtain state-specific information about alternative fuels and advanced vehicles. It includes those laws and incentives. It includes fueling station locations and clean cities locations with contact information. So it's basically a summary of that state, what's available through the DOE, through clean cities. Um, the coalition location map, which is actually shown right there in the picture, the various clean cities locations. Um, it's outlines all the Clean Cities coalitions by location across the U.S., and it also lists all the coordinator contact information. So say you're doing a project in another state, um, or if you're just curious about a project going on in another, another state, um, on the Clean Cities website, you can pull up the coalitions map, and you can find the specific coalition information for the coordinator, their location, um, so you can contact them and talk to them. And finally, what I mentioned before is the Idlebox Toolkit. It's a new resource available through Clean Cities. Um, it's, it contains print products, templates, presentations, and information resources. It's meant to assist with idle reduction projects for fleets with light and medium duty vehicles. Um, some of the materials are available in two versions, ready to use print products and customizable templates. Um, the tools can be used to educate and engage policymakers, fleet managers, drivers, and other decision makers about the benefits of reducing idling. Um, and this is available through the National Clean Cities page. The website's listed right there. Um, if idle reduction is something you're interested in, if you wanted to do some sort of internal or external campaign, um, please contact your local Clean Cities, Wisconsin Clean Cities, or South Shore, or whoever's near you. Um, they'll be happy, we will be happy to help you get that started, get access to these resources, and help coordinate that. And all of these tools that I'm going through today are available through your phone, through your um, tablet. They're all available mobily. And it, this one right here, cleancities.energy.gov backslash M, was specifically created for mobile use, and it can be used with any smartphone or tablet. You can locate alternative fuels, look up in miles per gallon and carbon footprint information, compare fuel cost and emissions, find truck stop electrification sites. It also allows you access to all the other pages on the Clean Cities website in a form that's more easily usable on your phone. So if you're on the go um, and you need to figure out, okay, I'm going and I need to know where I can fuel up, I didn't think to research this beforehand, you know, you can pull over, you can pull up this site, and you can find whatever contact information you need. So here's the website of what I've been referencing mostly today, and the website we were visiting. It's the afdc.energy.gov backslash tools. Um, you can also access it through any of the local Clean Cities websites. So with that, here's my contact information. Please let me know if you would like any more information about anything I discussed here today. Um, if you have any very technical, related, or specific questions, I'm happy to figure out any of that information for you if I don't know it. So thank you. And with that, I'd like to invite any questions. Feel free to click the raise your hand button or type something into chat. All right, well, again, my contact information is listed here. If you have any specific uh, questions or need help with anything, please feel free to contact me. And thank you for joining us on our final Clean Cities webinar series. Uh, on Clean Cities tools. We have gotten a lot of great feedback, and we do plan to do a webinar series in 2014. So if you would like to help out with that or would like more information, uh, please contact us. And thank you.